Hello again everyone and welcome to part 2 of the making of the Moon to Mars transport system, the LEGO model that I'm building to put into the Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral for NASA. In this episode I'll be telling you about how I had to basically start again halfway through the model to adapt and put the LED light strips all the way through the model, how I had to order around half the parts from 22 different locations around the world and how I had to actually spray paint a lot of the parts to customize them and put them into the model. We're on a mission to stop bullying, solve emergencies and help create the next generation of innovators. Go to awesomeclub.co, download our free app and sign up to the Awesome Club to become part of something inspirational. Firstly, a massive thank you to the LEGO team over in Denmark for supplying me with over 50% of the parts. I designed the model in a program called Studio 2, which means that you could use any part from any era. It didn't really matter because it's all digital. You could also choose any color for any parts, including parts that they never actually manufactured in those colors. So it was a little bit of a challenge because I actually had to go onto a website called Bricklink and order around 50% of the parts. Uh, lots of domes, a lot of uh, customized parts from the 80s and 90s. And then I had to go to the shops and buy some primer, plastic primer and some spray paints for different colors and actually uh, put the whole thing together. So I've actually got a few videos that I've stitched together from the experience over the last month and month and a half. And I hope you enjoy the videos. Uh, what do you think of my new Star Destroyer in the background there? I just finished building that last night. I think it looks absolutely epic. It's actually about the same length as the Moon to Mars system. And uh, so I might do another video of them next to each other before I end up shipping it to the Kennedy Space Center. Really love this model though. It was an epic build, a lot of fun. It looks incredible in real life. Uh, maybe I'll put some lights in it down the line uh, like I did for the Millennium Falcon on my left. Um, but we'll see how we go. Hey guys, had a fantastic day teaching virtual reality workshops and 3D design workshops at a school in North Brisbane. Just got home and found two Lego packages sitting on my doorstep. Uh, very excited about this, especially because one of them has six out of the 12 base plates that is required for the Moon to Mars transport system. So I have six, uh, two packages out of 21. So 19 more packages to go. Just have to be patient, guys. It'll get there in time. What do you reckon? All right, say hello, King Arthur. Yeah. Okay, just got home from work again and uh, have got another four packages arrived on my doorstep. So super excited. Some really, really important pieces in this particular delivery, including these base vehicle plates, which are incredibly important for the structural integrity of the MMTS. It's really important that when you're building heavy models, really large models, that you have really strong structural inside. Otherwise, the model tends to flex and sometimes breaks apart. A uh, whole bunch of transparent panels as well, which is also gonna be very important for this particular model. Really important to be organized when you're building, especially with large models. And I'm not building from instructions, obviously, because I built the model, I didn't make instructions for it. So if you don't have instructions, you have to be very organized, otherwise it disrupts the flow of the build and that really bugs me. It might not bug you, but it bugs me. Hey guys, I was up pretty late last night working on the MMTS till about 2 a.m. and I uh, just got back from the shops, had to buy some spray paint. I noticed that a bunch of the pieces that I ordered weren't actually the color that I was after, which is okay. I actually don't make those pieces in some of the colors that I wanted anyway. Uh, so I will just highlight what I've actually bought. So the first thing is I bought plastic primer. Um, this is very, very important for making sure that the paint sticks to the Lego properly and gives it a nice shine. Uh, if you just spray onto the Lego without the primer, it often doesn't look right and sometimes it peels very easily. So it's very important that you use some primer uh, before you actually do spray painting. Then I bought some black gloss paint and I'm gonna be using that on some of the pieces like the saucer panels. Um, and I'm gonna be using this blue metallic shine one on a lot of the solar panels. They only come in black as well, so I couldn't get them in blue. And then last but certainly not least, and the, probably the most important one out of all of them is this chrome one. This chrome one is gonna be used for a lot of different pieces. I'll be uh, going outside in a moment to actually show you how I do this to make the Lego pieces look really, really nice. And uh, so let's go outside. Okay, we're ready to apply the first coat, which is actually the plastic primer. I'm actually in the backyard, not doing this inside because of the fumes. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is spray over this one side, leave it for about 20 minutes, and then 
flip them over and do the other side and then let it dry as well before I apply any of the other uh, paint. Okay, so here we go. Just about 10 to 20 centimeters away. Okay, I've left to dry. It's uh, been dry for quite a while now. So now I'm going to apply this chrome spray paint. A bit of a test spray here. Okay, and just light coats. I'll let that dry and then flip them over, do the next coat, see how we go. When I was in the Kennedy Space Center, I remember how professional everything looked and how good the lighting was for all the different sections of the Kennedy Space Center Museum. And I thought to myself, why aren't I putting lighting into this model? So about halfway through, I decided that I would start again and completely redesign the inside of it and change the structure so I could actually put LED light strips all the way through the model. So I went to uh, one of our hardware stores in Australia called Bunnings and I bought a LED light strip. It was about $40, $50. And, um, and weaved it all the way through this new structure in the inside that I built. Um, the biggest issue was actually not putting the light strip in the model. It was actually the fact that the power pack was hanging from the bottom of the model and it looked really ugly. So I had to design the base stand to accommodate for the power pack. Um, and then I've also um, attached the power pack to a timer and the timer would basically allow the lights to turn on at the Kennedy Space Center opening visitor hours and then turn off at the closing hours. So that was a little bit of a challenge. I think I managed to pull it off and make it look pretty good. With the lights, it comes with a remote so they can change it to flashing lights or just a consistent blue or a fading light. You can change the speed of the changes. Uh, so yeah, I think the outcome was really good. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope you've had as much fun watching these videos as I have creating them. It's been an absolute ball. Yes, I have the finished model behind me, but I'm not gonna show you until you see part three where I'll make a proper finished video. Uh, please don't forget to go to awesomeclub.co and sign up to our free app. We're trying to help kids with emergencies and with bullying and encouraging creativity and innovation and uh, having a lot of fun at the same time. So please watch for part three. It'll be coming out very soon. And keep creating and having fun, guys. Guys.